my friends, hello and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor. Now today, it's Tag Tuesday and I do have a tag for you today. And it's also a Book Trek 2021 video because uh, this is a Star Trek tag. And this tag was created by Gina Stanier, the fantastic Gina Stanier. So she created this original Star Trek tag and the tag is called the Top 10 Reasons to Love Star Trek by Gina Stanier. And the first question is, in Star Trek, technology has saved the world. We are currently living through the technological revolution. Tell us a way that technology has helped you. What is your favorite tech? Well, I'm not all that, I'm not all that into tech here at Stately Vaughn Manor. Um, but I guess uh, my favorite tech would be, well, I use the iPhone the most. That's the technology that I use the most. I'm actually using it to film this video. It is currently strapped to a coat rack uh, with a rubber band. So that's the technology that I'm using the most. I also like my little Kindle reading device. This is the, what is this, the Kindle? It's not the Voyage, the Oasis. This is the Kindle Oasis. It's just a Kindle. Um, it's a Kindle with buttons. Makes it special. It's a, it's a dedicated reading device, so it's handy. So I guess I like that, although I do like physical books better. That's true. Uh, and then I've got this fancy tablet here. Look, there's Gina. And uh, yeah, I use this tablet quite a bit for different things. So, you know, those are the three bits of technology that I guess I use the most. I'm not sure that they, yeah, I guess they have changed my life because they enable me to be like on booktube, which is fun. So number two, cooking has become an art rather than something required for survival because they've got like their food replicators in the future. <laughs> By the next generation, Star Trek has gone vegan. In Deep Space Nine, Cisco prepares special meals to express his love. What is your favorite cookbook or food story? How do you eat? Do you like to entertain or cook for people? We used to like to entertain before the plague hit. We used to do that once in a while. Uh, as far as how I eat, uh, both the lady of the menor and I are vegan, so we are vegan. Hey, we're way ahead of the game. We're already at next generation level food-wise. Uh, cookbooks, I've got a few over here. I've got the dreaded Veganomicon. I use this one a lot, or we use this one a lot. Uh, the Veganomicon's a good one. Got a couple others hanging out over here. This one is essential. The art, uh, oh, excuse me, the joy of vegan baking. It's an essential one right here. And then, Big Vegan. I got the Big Vegan here, which is a really big vegan cookbook. Got all the tabs in there, because we use this, again, all the time. So, there you go. My food habits exposed for all the world to see. Let's see here, number three. There is no need to exchange money. Uh, and the acquisition of wealth is no longer the driving force in our lives. We work to better ourselves and the rest of humanity, says Picard. Uh, some sirens going off there. Humanity is not bettered at this point in our existence. Uh, let's see. What is your best money advice or money book or money YouTube channel? Uh, I don't, I don't think I own a single money book. Probably should, but I don't. Uh, I never watch anything money on YouTube. That sounds like a real boring drag. Only thing I use YouTube for is if I need to fix something. There's always a video on how to fix just about anything. Uh, if I need to get some, something to work, YouTube's good for that. Also, of course, BookTube is the only thing I use YouTube for. I'm mostly BookTube, actually, of course. Uh, money advice? Use your credit cards as little as possible. That's pretty easy money advice right there. Uh, only use your credit cards for super essential stuff. 
you have to eat, you don't want to starve, so yeah. If you have to use credit cards for that, sure. If you need gas and you don't have any money, you need to get to work, okay. But use your credit cards as little as possible. Don't, don't do any kind of non-essential spending with credit cards because debt will get you. I mean, I'm fortunate I have no credit card debt and I don't have any student loans. So that's a good place to be when you're a middle-aged person. That's what you want to shoot for. I know a lot of people are already suffering under crushing, ridiculous student loan debt. You don't want to put any debt on top of that if you can manage not to. So that's it. That's the extent of my money advice. You probably really don't want to take too much real world advice of any kind from me. Okay, number four. They drink a lot of coffee and tea, that is true. I love the episodes where a convivial cup of coffee is served up on the bridge of the original series. What is your favorite beverage? Do you like going out for coffee? Yeah, uh, coffee actually is my favorite beverage. Black coffee, I have it every morning and every afternoon. Black coffee, black as midnight. And I do like tea as well. I like Earl Grey tea. Can you, can you guess why Earl Grey tea is my tea of choice? It's because of Captain Picard, of course. Captain Picard's favorite drink is Earl Grey tea, and I picked that up from him. Because I watched a lot of Star Trek The Next Generation, a lot of it. All of it, actually. Uh, so yeah, Earl Grey tea. I drink that a lot. Okay, let's see. Number five. All the Star Trek series attempt to address social issues, these social issues of their time. What is your favorite book on a topic that is important to you? Uh, I don't read a ton of social issues books, um, but one does come to mind, and that might seem an odd choice, and that would be, uh, I don't have a copy because the manor's under construction and all my books except for the books in this room and a little bit in the hallway are in boxes, so I can't show them to you. I don't have that magic power that some booktubers have to magically put the, the books up on the screen. I could probably gain that magic power, but I'm too lazy. So I'll just tell you. Uh, the book I have in mind is called Why People Believe Weird Things by Michael Shermer. It's a kind of a, it's a book by the editor of Skeptic Magazine. And it's a science skepticism type book. And you think, well, geez, that doesn't really fit, does it? It does, actually. Uh, and I'll tell you why. I think one of the major problems, if not the major problem we have in this world, is the fact that human beings, all of us, we do not base our beliefs on evidence. We should, but we just don't. Uh, which is why... Even really, really smart people can believe really, really strange and sometimes dumb things. Uh, and also why people who are otherwise smart will reject evidence if it doesn't support what they want to be true. And this contributes to a lot of problems, the major problems in our world, like climate change, global warming. Uh, we've had, we've had knowledge about what's happening with global warming for years. It's not a secret. We know what's going on, but we won't change anything because a lot of people just refuse to believe that climate change is real or that we have anything to do with it because they don't want to accept evidence. They don't base their beliefs on evidence. Uh, and a lot of problems are social problems. You can, you can, uh, trace right back to that. The evidence is clear on a lot of things and people just won't believe it. And so I was curious, I've always been kind of curious about that. I've always been kind of a skeptical person anyway, and I want to know why people believe weird things and how people form their beliefs. And uh, so that's a bo good book to read, why people believe weird things. So yeah, that's the one I would pick for that by Michael Shermer. Let's see, number six. Spock and Kirk have the best relationship on any show or series ever. Share a book with a unique or complex relationship or share your favorite Star Trek relationship. Well, of course, my favorite relationship in books is the relationship between 
Sherlock Holmes and Watson. I've said before that's my favorite friendship in uh, all of literature, and it is probably my favorite relationship in all of literature. On television, yeah, I don't know that you can beat the relationship between Kirk and Spock. That's a good one. There are a couple other Star Trek relationships uh, that I like an awful lot. Uh, I like the relationship between Seven of Nine and Janeway. Uh, I like the relationship between Picard and Data. Um, I actually like the relationship between Geordi and Data as well. So yeah, those are the relationships that pop to mind in Star Trek. I don't know if any of those relationships come close to what Kirk and Spock have, but uh, there are a lot of relationships in Star Trek that are just really interesting. Uh, it's a pretty darn good show, Star Trek. All the Star Treks are pretty good. I mean, except for maybe that last one. Uh, let's see. Number seven, Star Trek has a wonderful style. Over the series, the uniforms and character styles have evolved. Some have been hideous and some have been wonderful. Characters, hair changes. Hello, Chekhov's wig. Do you have a personal uniform? Do you have any fashion or style faux pas from your past? No, no, no faux pas. Never, never. I've never had a fashion faux pas ever, not ever, not in my entire life. Not even in the 80s when I had dyed jet black hair and wore a leather jacket and tattered clothing and Doc Martens. No, not even then. Never have I had a fashion faux pas. Not once, not once in my life. So that's the answer to that. Do I have a uniform? Well, I do on my videos, more or less. Um, as for the rest of my life, who knows? And as far as Star Trek is concerned, there have been some really cool uniforms and some really awful ones. I think universally we all agree that the uniforms in Star Trek The Motion Picture were ridiculous. Those were probably the worst uniforms. I have an awful soft spot for the uniforms from the original series. I like those uniforms. Uh, as far as the rest of Star Trek goes, I think my... My least favorite are probably the ones, not just from the ocean picture, but I don't like the uniforms in the movies either. I know Steve Donahue likes those. He said in his version of this tag that he likes those uniforms. I don't. Um, I liked the uniforms on Star Trek The Next Generation after they got rid of the unitards. Once they became two-part uniforms, uh, I liked those. I liked that, those uniforms a lot. They seem to kind of harken back to the uniforms of the original series but they were kind of their own thing. They looked very Star Trek-y to me. I like those uniforms. So yeah, there you go. That's my answer to the uniform question. Uh, let's see, number eight. Star Trek has spawned an era of cons and fan culture that supports individuals and brings us together as a community. What is your favorite TV show, movie, book, or author event that brings you together with your community? Of course, I'm going to go with what everybody else says, and that's the BookTube community. Um, I love the BookTube community, and uh, that's probably the one that comes to mind because it's the one I'm the most involved in. I was, I did go to a Star Trek convention once, years ago, in the late 90s. It was probably 98, 99, sometime around then. I think it was it was before Deep Space Nine came on the air, but Star Trek: The Next Generation was on. And at that con, at that con, um, Patrick Stewart was there, and so I saw Patrick Stewart speak at the Star Trek convention, and it was fun. It was a fun little convention. Uh, all the Star Trek people running around, and it was all you know original series Next Generation. Then that's what Star Trek was at the time, and it was fun. Where was that? I think it might have been in Walnut Creek, maybe? It was some place like that. That was fun. That was a good time. I haven't gone to one since, though. I, You know, I should go to a Star Trek convention someday when there's no plague. I should do that. Uh, number nine. Star Trek books have beautiful and weird cover art. What is your favorite weird and beautiful book or book art? Show us your favorite books. Well, most of my books are packed away. Um, so I can't show you my favorite book or book cover art for the most part. I will, with with a, with one exception. Uh, the one exception being this one that I just dragged out of, out of my uh, comics bookshelf. Um, 
And that's the colossal King Conan. You know I gotta stick Conan in everything. But look at this guy. This is Grandpa Conan. This is King Conan. Look at, even as an old guy, Conan's cool with his bloody sword and he's about to kick some ass there. I mean, he's just awesome, Conan, even as an old man. So there it is. This is the colossal King Conan. This is a giant book. It's huge and it's amazing. The colossal King Conan and it's got that awesome cover on it. So that's just the one I grabbed when I saw that this question was on there. Uh, as for covers on Star Trek books, the older Star Trek books, and Steve Donahue pointed this out in his channel, had beautiful cover art. Uh, the original James Blish series books. I'm just going to show you one, uh, and it's one that Steve Donahue on his version of this tag showed, but I just think it's wonderful. Look at that. Um, all the paint, all the paintings that they used on Star Trek's one, uh, four onwards, I think to 11, were pretty, were pretty great. That's an awful good cover. Now your average Star Trek cover I've noticed is a little boring. They, they tend to, not always, but they tend to have a formula, most of them. Uh, and the formula is some Star Trek characters hanging out with maybe a ship in the background, and that's the cover. Now, the, I understand why, for marketing purposes, why you'd want that. Hey, look, there are my Star Trek guys, and you, you pick it up. But it's always like that on a lot of these books. Here's Star Trek The Next Generation, same thing. Bunch of Star Trek ca characters hanging out, ship in the background. Or ships and that's that's the cover for a long time in more recent years they've been a little bit more creative uh, but I don't have any of those covers so I can't show you um, but yeah let's see so I'm not sure that except for the older Star Trek books I'm not sure that they do have beautiful and weird cover art usually from what I've seen they look kind of like that <laughs> neither beautiful nor weird um, for a lot of, for a lot of Star Trek books. Number 10, I love Star Trek's vision of the future, or vision of hope for the future, and the optimism that humans can create a better society. Data, the next generation, wants to become more human-like. Are you a pessimist or an optimist when it comes to being human? Do you think we can make the Star Trek dream of, for the future, a reality? No. Um... No, it's not gonna happen. Uh, sadly, and this is sad, and this harkens back to my earlier talk about, about the book that I chose, Why People Believe Weird Things. No, we're doomed. Uh, <laughs> here's the thing. Because people do not base their beliefs on evidence, um, I don't think that we're going to reach a Star Trek-like future ever. I think we're going to run out of time before that. Uh, unfortunately, global warming, for example, climate change is happening right now. We all knew it, we knew it was going to happen. If people would actually have believed it, we could have fixed this problem. This was a fixable problem, we could have fixed it, we didn't. There's no sign that we're going to. So climate change is going to happen. It's happening, it's going to continue to happen, it's going to get really, really bad. We're not going to be able to fix it in time. It's not happening. It's just not. Um, we've got to, I think it might be helpful to just face up to the reality that climate change is going to happen and it's not going to be fixed. Um, it would be, I'd like to be wrong about that. I'd like, for people to suddenly just change and be like, oh, we have to do this? Okay, we'll do this now before it gets too awful. It's too late, it's gonna get awful. And we could, if we just change things right now, we could help a lot. We can avoid some, some of the catastrophe, but we won't. Uh, the evidence says no. The evidence says we're not going to do that. And we have all kinds of other social issues and other problems uh, that we don't change either because, you know, we don't believe evidence. 
which is why people vote against their own interests and why racism still exists and all kinds of other issues. Uh, we can't even fix those things. And those are really fixable things. Uh, and I think all of that is going to take attention away from space exploration for one thing. And all those things will prevent us from moving forward as one society. Uh, again, I would like to be wrong. And I don't actually think that that makes me a pessimist. I, I think that just accepting the evidence and just saying, this is the way things are going. I, I don't think that makes you a pessimist. I think that just, you know, that's the way things are. Uh, I don't, I don't like to believe things just because I want them to be true. A lot of people do this. Wishful thinking is very popular for people and biases control their thinking a lot of the times or they control what they believe. Confirmation bias especially. And we're all susceptible to that. I'm no exception. Uh, I'm just aware of it. And I try to be careful. If I, if I start believing something that I really, really want to be true, when you start believing something you really, really want to be true, that's the time to be extra skeptical not less skeptical. You have to be extra skeptical in that when, when you start doing that. Everything that I see points to a grim future. Again, I'd love to be wrong on that. That'd be awesome if I was. Uh, yeah. Oh, and that was it. See, I left you with an uplifting ending. A happy ending to this tag. So now all that is left is to tag people. So Tome Raider, of course, because Tome Raider is uh, taking part in this book trek 2021. So Tome Raider. Uh, this Justin, even though he's not really taking part, it would be fun to see Justin's version of this tag. Uh, Gina already tagged a lot of the people I would have tagged. Um, I believe. Did she, did she tag Book Time with Elvis? She had to have, right? Um, yeah, well, Book Time with Elvis, if you haven't been tagged already, tag Book Time with Elvis. So there you go. My Star Trek tag. Uh, great job, Gina. I'll link her channel down below. Fantastic job on this tag, Gina Stanier. So I will catch you tomorrow when I'm talking about Iron Man. I'll catch you guys then. Thanks, guys.